in about 1984 or 85, somewhere there, the then Archbishop of, I don't think Frank Little, just gone to God about six months ago, asked me, well, he didn't, somebody rang me and said, come to lunch. And at lunch, this man who had been the secretary of what was then called the Schools Provident Fund, which is a sort of a finance arm of the church, uh, borrowing money uh, at low interest and lending money back into the church at low interest as well. And so committed money and so on. And he wanted me to become secretary of this fund, and I said, that'd be stupid. I, I've got a master's degree in management. I don't know anything about finance or money. That I am, That's not been the focus of it at all. But you must know something. I said, no, nope. what, what I'm saying is what you see and what you get. He said, oh, well, the Archbishop would like to talk to you. So a little while later, I get a phone call from the Archbishop. So I say the same thing. There's no point. You know, it would be stupid. It's a finance organization, finance arm of the church. There's no way that I'd be of any use. Oh, well, I'd like you to think about it. I'll call you in a month. In the third of those three calls, and he got back to me exactly that date on it. So it was diarized in some fashion. The third of those three calls, I again went and saw him. I said, and I said, you know, the only thing I'd have any contribution to make is help them to work together better. He said, that's exactly what I wanted to happen. I said, oh shit, or whatever it is you say at that point. And, uh, so I was appointed there with, with no apparent clarity. Um, and, um, and I insisted on the appointment being for three years only. Because I think church as an institutional organisation, appoints people and then leaves them there to rot. And um, I think that's one of those delicacies. And um, he uh, he accepted that. And at the end of three years, I wrote and said, well, it's time is up. He wrote back and said, please, I need you to stay another two years, no matter what, because, you know, so much has happened in such a short time and we really need to consolidate and build on that. At the end of five years, I again wrote and said, um, time and this time he wrote back and said thank you for coming it's very kind of you to tell me and, uh, and I was really quite shattered by that because I expected him to come back and say hey, keep it going and we'd moved it from about 126 million dollar base in the wrong from about a 65 million dollar base to something in the vicinity of 126 128 million in that five years um, that's a huge shift in capital investment in, in what is a voluntary investment sort of organization yeah. I think that was a, I think both of those, the sort of the being appointed to that mm-hmm. and then being, if you want, dumped from it. And the point person they So what was the shift in ground there for you from that experience? At the end of it or at the beginning of it? At the end. At the end of it. Um, and maybe at the beginning, let's well, wrap the circle. The beginning was yeah. the, the, the sort of the challenge of being able to make some sort of meaningful contribution. And I had no idea what that might be. But it was sort of, I knew that only by working with the people that they would have had, because of the work I'd done at Hammersley and other places and things and with the military and the Department of Education, the Taxation Department and the list goes on. Um, I knew that there would be ideas that were there. Um, what they were and stuff, I didn't. I neither, neither needed to know or was interested to know, except that there, was, there would be ideas there that would sort of pick up. You know, um, in that time, they, they started a payroll service. That now turns over several million dollars a year, and the profit on that is is significant. Um, we started; they started a, a new way of computing, which is again, I mean, none of them were my ideas, but the environment was such that those ideas could get up and be put into play, and, and, uh, and that's the kind of thing. At the end of it, the significant thing was that um, that I'd become enmeshed in the thing. Um, in my language now, probably too much, and and was sort of um, so. It was a right move to it was a right move to happen, but it wasn't really my move. It was the spirit of God or somebody or other, or the Archbishop or somebody or other, sort of deciding it was time to change him over. The guy that replaced me with is still there, which is now twenty five years later, which I just think is crazy, <laughs> and, and he's not. He makes no contribution there now. He's, he's He's nearly as old, he's older than I am, and he's sick and all that kind of thing. But he's still there, no matter what. So you could have been there if you never said anything. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> well, anyway, the reality is that I'm not there. That's right. What it did mm. was also free you up from from a commitment 
at that level to do other things um, and uh, not just inside Australia but outside Australia and uh, so there was no I mean even during that five years I was there or six years or however long it was um, I still was doing things outside and doing open space work and all that kind of stuff but there was a whole lot of things that I didn't um, I didn't know uh, that came along going as well. Yeah. Right through the whole of the time as a priest I've always been involved in parish stuff. Um, even when I was teaching at Melbourne and teaching at RMIT you still were looking after parish locations on weekends and, and things like that so it was always you didn't sort of go off into the, you know, pre-scholar world, which is where some of them thought that I might go, and uh, I didn't do that. Maybe if I'd done a doctorate or something, I don't know. I can remember one guy, Tom, I can't remember his other name, in, in Los Angeles, I think, maybe San Francisco. He was running a psychology institute, and um, having talked to me for quite some time over dinner and things like that, he said, well, now I need to talk to you about employing you. I said, well, before you do that, you need to know I don't have a doctorate. Oh, he said, well, this, that ends the conversation, doesn't it? And um, so that was sort of intriguing. And it was at the time where, and still is the time in the United States, so if you haven't got a doctorate, you ain't, you don't, you're not worth anything in terms of the academic world. And um, I, I guess at some stage I must have decided I wasn't going to do any further study in that sort of direction. And if I had... We wouldn't be sitting here, I'm sure. Mm. I'd be working in the US. So this is like the turning point you never had. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a non-turning turning point, if you want. But, but at some point in time, and I don't know when it was, but I, I know I decided I really wanted to keep working in this part of the world, not migrating to the United States, which is what it would otherwise have meant. Um, and I'm really, uh, at this point in time, I'm more than happy that that's the way it's worked out. Not that you can change any of it, because that is how it's worked out. But um, that I'm quite pleased on that score, indeed. And you know, and I get the opportunity, and still get the opportunity if I wanted to, to teach in all sorts of universities around the world. <laughs> and, and, and so the the non-turning point, turning point, though, was that was that an actual choice at the time? Did you was it um, a choice? It was not a choice that, that wasn't a choice. Um, it was a choice that I. I could have made having finished master's degree and, mm. and there was an opportunity to kind of go on. So, I mean, I would have had to decide somewhere in that period of time. I just know I didn't decide that. I decided that's not what I'm deciding. I wasn't, you know, wake up some Thursday and it, this is the day I decided <laughs> that. It's just that that's what happened as it went along. And, uh, and I, I guess... One of the things that was at the back of that decision is that I wanted to see if I could make a contribution in this country. Um, and going to the US was going to mean it would negative that and, and negate that. It doesn't mean you wouldn't make a contribution in the United States, but, but, but I, I think I wanted to make a contribution here. Well, I know I wanted to make a contribution here, if I could. If I couldn't, couldn't make a contribution here, well, then I wasn't going to be making a contribution somewhere else anyway. And there's a point, you know, in the scripture stuff, that, you know, prophet in his own country never gets any honour. And so it's been a lot harder to make any contribution here than it would have been. And I can do a whole lot more in the US or in Canada or in Europe or in Slovenia or in Sweden, have done, you know, because you're a foreign expert, you know. But here, uh, what would you know? <laughs> The same as you've ever been guilty of reading scripture, the same as in the Isaiah book of Isaiah, you know, they kind of criticize him because he's, or the Jesus story, you know, good God, he comes from this town. How could a guy from this town be of any, nah, making miracles and stuff, don't do that here, never did that here, <laughs> 30 years he lived here, what, <laughs> yeah, so, um, so what was that quote again, prophet in his own country, country doesn't get any honor.